Hi guys, my name is Natasha and welcome back to my channel. Here I make videos about Russia and the Russian culture and today I will have a very interesting conversation with Nikita. And Nikita is a traveler, he's been in many countries and Nikita, now you can present yourself and tell about... Well, my Russian name is Nikita or I simply call myself Nikki. I love traveling. I spent last six years traveling around Asia and around my own country, Russia. Yeah, and uh, now I'm staying in Khabarovsk city where I met Natasha. And Nikita, before Khabarovsk, he visited Vladivostok and he messaged me on YouTube and I was like, we should meet and I'm really glad that now we met here and Nikita is uh, also going to make a video about Khabarovsk and about Russian cities and I recommend you to subscribe to his channel. Well, thank you, Natasha. <laughs> yeah, I'm traveling and making videos about that. That's exactly how we met each other. I just saw a video on YouTube from Natasha about uh, Russia, her hometown, <laughs> very funny one. And after that, we started talking about uh, traveling, about living abroad. And today we will be talking about the difference in perception of our own country after living abroad. I spent five years living in China, one year living in Thailand and Natasha. And I spent uh, eight months living in the United States and I also visited China for two times. I think it will be interesting to compare how we now percept Russia after that experience abroad. In my travels, I often think about one simple idea. When you don't travel, when you stay at one single place, you don't really think about how different our world is. But once you go somewhere and stay for a long time, like uh, eight months mm -hmm. uh, in the States, yeah. Once you are back to your hometown or, or, or your country, you just see it differently. So today we are going to talk about very simple daily life things that are different for us after coming back mm -hmm. here to Russia. Before going to the United States, I lived in uh, Spasdalny, a small town in the very east of Russia. And then I moved to Khabarovsk and studied there for two years and then I spent almost a year in the United States and living in America was a very unusual experience for me because I have not traveled much before this and when I returned back to Russia, it was March of 2020, it was a very hard time of COVID-19 and that's why I had to go to Russia a little earlier. But anyway, so in Spask, I had kind of a cultural shock. <laughs> yeah, I had a... So, uh, what kind of cultural shock did you have? Well, it was a little bit negative because uh, in the United States, people are more polite to strangers and they're always smiling to you. In Russia, I was at first uh, astonished by how gloomy people looked. <laughs> it's my first impression after a long time that people were really sad and I didn't want to associate myself with them. I wanted to be like, hi, how are you? Hello, like how I used to behave in the United States. And then I started to adjust to my Russian culture, to my city. I'm still trying to be positive, but I know that it's not necessarily to smile to strangers in Russia, yeah, because it's a common thing that we don't smile. And what about... Well, uh, that is a common thing for me too, like, First time I came back to Russia after living in Asia, I noticed that I keep smiling much more <laughs> and my smile this. is bigger than an average Russian face smile. And uh, it takes me about three days to adjust and to lower down my smile of my face. So and sad. then, <laughs> and then uh, it takes another three days after coming back to, let's say, China to get my smile back on my face. So that is a real thing. <laughs> Wow, it should be such a talent just to, to be able to change your smile. Yeah, it's actually sad yeah. that we have to adjust, but it's also just a cultural thing that we have to consider. Yeah, I also have to say that if you go to Nikki's channel, you can see that I can see his videos. He's always smiling there. Yeah, just, yeah. I'm just a smiley person. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're like two opposite because for a Russian you're smiling too much and I smiling yeah. even less than Russian people usually. <laughs> well, um, I got a lot of friends while living abroad, while traveling and uh, all of them say that it's very unusual to see me having no smile on my face and recently I post a lot of pictures on Instagram about uh, traveling in Russia and uh, sometimes I post it without a smile on my face mm. uh, and they say this just <laughs> looks <laughs> not like me. 
Um, yeah, so that is the first thing which is different for us after coming back here. I noticed that internet is really cheap here. Mm. I mean, I noticed this already yeah. in the United States when I had to buy a SIM card. And I remember that the cheapest variant was about $25 per month. And in Russia, you can pay just 500 rubles, mm -hmm. which is uh, in dollars. It's about like maths. I'm mad at math. I don't know. I just put <laughs> so, it $500 there. is about uh, 5 to 6 US dollars. 500 yeah. rubles, I mean. For 5 gigabytes or even for unlimited internet. Yeah, the plans are different. So Yeah, that's right. Like, I have a Russian SIM card with unlimited uh, internet, very high speed, and I pay only 300 rubles per month, which is. 3.5 US dollars or so and while living in China the internet um, cost me about at least 8 to 9 US dollars a month for mobile and uh, honestly I have no idea how much I paid for broadband connection at mm -hmm. least it was about 50 to 60 US dollars a year so it's actually not that expensive there is it states so it's really expensive about uh, mobile networks and about internet general yeah so one of the russian advantages is that uh, the internet is history cheap here as for food it's cheaper in russia mm -hmm. than in the western world but in russia it's more expensive than in asia right well uh, basically that's right and uh, that's actually the biggest struggle for me now i get used to eat out every single day like I don't cook at home only when I want to do it like a hobby yeah I would but generally I just go to a simple routines or restaurants street food and it costs really not much money but here in Russia people have to like literally have to pay some time and attention to daily cooking there's no other choice except the case when you actually earn a lot of money yeah. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, it's just like a painful topic for me because after returning to Russia, I lived with my parents in my hometown and thanks to my mom, she always cooks something delicious and um, I helped her a little but I didn't uh, put so much time and attention to cooking but now here in Khabarovsk I live alone and I started to cook and uh, it was hard. I mean, I still can't cook something really which takes a lot of efforts like meat or fish and it's cheaper than if I went to a restaurant. People go to restaurants in Russia to some particular occasion, a holiday or birthday, just something really fancy, so it's not that common for us. And also something about prices, it's different. So Nikita is from Omsk, or oh, actually Omsk? Uh, yeah, I am from Omsk. Is it uh, the western part or European part? That is uh, somewhere in the middle of Russia, very close to Kazakhstan. Oh, yeah, so it's uh, to the east from the Ural Mountains. Yes. For some reason I thought that Omsk in the European part was... No, 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 it's not in oh. the European part, it's actually the middle, uh, and Omsk is located in Siberia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the south of Siberia. And you know what's funny? In the internet, if you look up Siberia, you can see that Far East, the region where we are now, mm -hmm. is considered Siberia too. Oh, really? So, yeah, from the Ural Mountains to the very east, and I was a little bit angry because in Russia we have a strong division between Siberia and the Far East. So it's like this, this is Russia, Moscow region is here, and the European part of Russia here is Siberia and Far East. Yeah. This is just the classification that I like more. And yeah. So what we were discussing, the prices are different here. So they can be about 30% more expensive than um, in um, the Moscow region. Oh, well, is there anything actually cost more money than it cost in the States? I don't remember particularly, but what I understood that in Russia services cost less but products cost more. United States is different. Service is really appreciated there. So a less can cost from $20 to $40. Just generally people's labor is appreciated more and paid more. While products uh, relatively they are cheap. The newest iPhone, if you buy it in America, it will be about 20,000 ruble cheaper than if you buy the same model in Russia. But in Russia, it's opposite, and things like brand clothes they cost more than people's labor, which is actually really sad because I would like people's labor to be appreciated more. There is a question that always bothers me. Once I left my hometown. I cannot actually accept being back and live my whole life 
to the same city where I was born before. Mm. Like, it's unacceptable for me. I love traveling there, I love seeing my friends and family. I love traveling around Russia, but I don't see myself living there. And there's a bunch of reasons for them. How about you? Well, um, I spent 18 years in Spask, in my hometown, and it's a small town, then I lived uh, two years here in Khabarovsk. I didn't travel much before, and in the United States, I was an exchange student there, and I had a small scholarship which led me to travel, to, and finally there, I understood this idea of traveling, that it's so cool to go to different cities, to see places, to meet new people. I also used couch surfing. And Kita used car surfing too, and it's just, yeah, it's a very unusual experience. <laughs> and I also understood that I really like urban tourism, so I like to go to local cafes. I cannot say that now I want to travel like non stop all the time in my life, but I definitely want to visit every country in this world, and I don't want to go back to Spask and to live there because this city is uh, really small and there are no opportunities. As for Kabaras, I still don't know because people are are also live in the city and it's a very hard topic where I want to live in, in a year or in two years because I'm graduating this year yeah. and I don't know, maybe I will stay in Kabarsk for a while. Yeah. And what about you? Well, um, I want to travel. I love traveling and that's basically what I'm doing <laughs> last right couple now. of years. Yeah. And uh, this very time I came back to Russia. I plan only to roam around this country from the very east to the very west, yeah, from the city of Vladivostok to St. Petersburg, and after that I'm about to leave to the next place, somewhere in Europe. And the reason to that, that I actually cannot see myself living in my hometown is that, like Natasha said about uh, her hometown, Spask Dalny, there aren't many opportunities to grow in Habarovsk, in this city we are staying at now, opportunities are here but not as many as let's say in other places in Moscow, in Moscow yeah and um, the effort you do the amount of effort you do here in Russia and the amount of effort you do in, let's say in America or in Asia or in Europe it could be the same amount of effort but the outcome the profit is totally different let's say people in Russia could work a lot but earn actually very little money mm -hmm. same Amount of work in America will cost five times, maybe ten times higher. In Asia, maybe three, four times higher. So that's why I am coming back to Russia only to travel, not to live long lives. Yeah, life in Russia. I don't know, it sounds life in Russia is so hard and I don't want here to speak so badly about Russia because we are people from so many different countries and we know that there is no good and bad, that we always have to consider everything from different sides. But I agree with this, that in Russia you have to work more to be able to afford the same amount of comfort, comfort. Of income. Yeah, and I noticed that in America the lowest uh, income is eight dollars per hour well in russia it's about like three dollars per hour i once saw a map a map of what percent of their income people spend on food in different countries and in russia it's a big percent compared to the western countries and even an example of my family and families of my friends we spend a lot on our food and to be able to travel or to buy a car or to move you have to work like for years and it is really sad. I think that people deserve more. And I don't know why it's happened. And it's happened because uh, Russia, oh, my favorite topic, is get you to you guys because I'm going, no, I'm not going to rant about Russian politics now. I think it's just a topic oh, it's for, for the next video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but just really briefly, Russia is controlled by oligarchs or the rich people who control our resources. And a small percent of Russian population has the biggest percent of uh, Russian money and they all buy villas abroad and they send their money to the Western banks and uh, Russian people they're just uh, surviving and yeah you can live good in Russia if you like we have this saying if you have had on your shoulders like if you can work if you're smart you can live for in any country without any problems yeah yeah but still I don't know, maybe I will even leave Russia and go to Germany, I don't know how it will work out in the end. 
have another thing, the difference in perception mm -hmm. of Russian image uh, in my eyes. Before starting traveling, I didn't really pay attention to my own city and uh, its surroundings. I didn't want to explore it, I didn't want to know more about that. But once I left it, rolled around, saw the world and came back, I actually <laughs> had the desire to discover the place I grew up and now every time I'm coming back to see my friends and family I'm actually looking forward to see more about my hometown from the touristic point of view. I don't know if you feel anything like that. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about and I have a question. So in Omsk, if I'm not mistaken, it's called Omsk, Omsk region, like the region yeah. around. And what are the attractions that can be interesting both for foreigners and for people who like rediscover the local area? Well, basically uh, Omsk Oblast or Omsk region has no points of attraction for foreign travelers except the case you want to discover and to see the uh, local authentic Russian life. Then it will be a really great example at the sea, but uh, it's not really different from uh, the rest of our country. But in the city itself, in Omsk city, there are quite a lot of places to go and things to do. If you go in summer, uh, you like the scenery and walking around the city, trying all kinds of Russian food and seeing the architecture. There are a lot of attractions in the city. If it's winter, it's even better. The landscape really beautiful. The surrounding we have like place for skiing, place for skydiving or something. Extreme sports? Yeah, some extreme sports in winter. Snowboarding? Snowboarding, exactly, and so on. You know, I just created a joke that Omsk has recently become famous for the fact that Navalny was in the hospital there. Oh yeah, yeah. again Russian politics. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about uh, Habarovsk? Yeah, I definitely changed my attitude to local tourism because, as I said before, the United States I didn't travel much and because, yeah, in Russia, cities, they similar to each other. They are not so different as European cities or in the United States. As an example, I can compare Minneapolis and Houston or Portland and Miami. They're completely different and different cultures and different food are there. But in Russia, it's all, maybe it's because in the Soviet Union, they tend to make it all the same and we have the same project buildings uh, the mm, same yeah. squares Lenin street everywhere yeah, uh, Lenin sculptures everywhere like we are staying somewhere around the Karl Marx street and so yeah. on <laughs> I, every I, single city I live on Leningradskaya street which is called after Leningrad the city of St. Petersburg that was renamed after Lenin so yeah. yeah and I thought that all our cities are the same but then I understood that when you travel it's really interesting you can just go to your Google Maps and like, hmm, what museums are open right now or what cafes are nearby? Yeah. And from this point of view, I understood that Russian cities are interested too. Mm. Um, this is the thing that I'm always talking about in my videos, that here in the Far East we have a great potential for tourism, but it's not developed. Well, it is, so like Nikki said, he has been to Vladivostok and he still enjoyed Vladivostok, right? Vladivostok is great, uh, nature there is amazing. <laughs> yeah, and I think that we have so many unique places and in each city we can create even more attractions for tourists. And this summer I went to Arsenyev, it's also a town near Spask and it's called after Arsenyev who was an explorer of this region. And now I want to go to Birbijan, the city that is close to Havars, for to Blagoveshins, your next destination. And oh, by the way, I saw that tickets to Petropavlovsk Kamchatsky are really cheap, it's like on sale. I want to visit Yakutsk, Sakhalin Island, all of it. Yeah, so I understood that in Russia you can travel too, and there are many interesting places. Even though they are not advertised so well, they're still... Yeah. Yeah. Well, that sounds like an underline for our conversation. And uh, what I understood after going abroad, after leaving Russia for a while and coming back here, we both have similar similar ideas about living here and about traveling. We started to treasure Russian natural sites and uh, culture and uh, travel advantages more than before. Yeah. And we also, at least in my eyes, uh, cannot accept having the same level of lifestyle 
as we did before, before going abroad. Yeah, because when you travel, you it's kind of a cliche phrase that I used to hear before I travel, that when you travel, you know yourself, you learn about the world and you become like enlightened. And I thought that, well, I can watch a travel video on YouTube or to read an article, which is also very educational too, but I understood that when you travel, it's just another level of learning about this universe. And there's a meme, a famous meme in Russia. It's a man who is going to a river and he said, I learned about this earth everything. I'm like a monk, I'm enlightened. And he said it throughout all the 10 minutes video. <laughs> so now I'm like that man who is enlightened because of the travel. And yeah, it changes you as a person. So come to Russia. I, I feel that we're like advertising tourism in Russia, but yeah, it's just a fact that in Russia you can meet so many interesting places, cuisine, people, and you'll like it. Well, uh, I'm really looking forward to see all the stuff Natasha just said on the way from Habarovsk to St. Petersburg. And if you guys like seeing such kind of troll videos, watching videos about Russia, you know, go down in the description and subscribe to my channel because I'm about to make such kind of videos about every single city I visit on my way and there will be a lot. I'm so excited about these videos because you will go through this uh, Trans-Siberian Railway. You will be hitchhiking, right? But um, it's on the together way, uh, by train uh, and hitchhiking. Yeah. You will make this famous route that not even all Russians do. So Nikita will see all the cities on this way. Once again, I really recommend you to subscribe to his blog because it just in terms of production, it has a high quality and you can see that he even uh, makes these icons for video. They're, they are very beautiful and I really like your content that you do and I think that there must be more views and there will be more views because Nikita will continue to make many videos and I'm sure that they will be really educational and just very interesting for you. Well, I guess both of us will keep it up <laughs> and make yeah. videos more educational from Natasha's side and more, I guess, uh, just fun <laughs> travel style from my side. Yeah. Thank you guys for watching this video. It was the first time when I had a video of such a format, like a conversation with a Russian fellow YouTuber. I would like to. And yeah, check your likes, write your comments, go to Miki's channel and check her out, subscribe and so on. Yeah, guys, support Natasha's channel by clicking that like button and writing a comment because it really helps to grow the channel. Do it to her. And thank you for watching this video. Bye. Bye. Блин. И я надеюсь, что камера записывала. Ну, тоже на это надеюсь.